So I wanted to take a quick look at this VTech Precomputer 1000. I'm actually in the middle of doing a teardown on it right now, but I thought before I got to the point of no return, a brief tour of the device could be interesting. As you can see from the startup message, the Precomputer 1000 was released in 1988 and has a fairly typical layout for an educational computer of this era. On the top, there's a 20 by 1 character LCD and an array of push buttons that allow the user to select the desired function. On the bottom is a QWERTY keyboard that, outside of a few unusual keys, roughly corresponds to what's known as a 60% layout. But the most interesting thing about the device is the fact that it's powered by a 4 MHz Z80 processor, the same sort of chip you would have found in a desktop computer in the early 80s. Which perhaps explains why the designers decided to give this child's toy a fairly capable software development environment. When selecting the computer drill function, you get two options. You can look at a list of built-in programs or get dropped right into the basic environment. Selecting two will start up pre-basic 1.0. A nice touch here is that it automatically puts the caps lock on. And this works pretty much like any other basic you might have used before. Enter a line number, type in some code, and type run to execute it. It's interesting to note that you have to press enter between each line or it'll just wait. Then you can go back and list the program. And if you keep track of your line numbers, you can edit what you've already written or sneak in a few extra lines of code here and there. Pressing the computer drill button again will return you to the main menu. And from there, you can access the list of built-in programs. It's nice that they include this function because it serves to document the pre-computer's particular variant of basic in a way that you can actually carry around with you. One of the examples which I thought was particularly interesting was number four. If we list the lines of code, we can see that the user is prompted to enter in a number of minutes and seconds, which are saved to variables. These variables are then used to create loops, which effectively just waste time. At the end of this user-defined delay, the pre-computer will play a tone signifying that time's up. Now the interesting thing here is that the loops used to create these delays effectively lock up the computer entirely. So while the timer is running, none of the other functions work. That even includes the ability to turn the computer on and off. A useful tip to file away in the somewhat unlikely event you ever need to perform a denial of service attack on a 1988 VTech Precomputer 1000.